if this happens, I believe Bitcoin can reach 6,000 very, very quickly. And on the contrary, if an alternative series of events happens, I can see Bitcoin dropping drastically right here in the immediate term. So I'd like to discuss and analyze both scenarios with you all here today. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Crypto Kirby here, your cryptocurrency expert, back with another edition of the daily live stream. What is going on, my friends? Today I'd like to discuss Bitcoin and the aforementioned topics of what is necessary for Bitcoin to reach the 6,000 level, in my opinion. And also, if it cannot do it, if the feat cannot be defeated, where are we going to see Bitcoin drop down to as well, in my opinion? So, ladies and gentlemen, as a full-time trader, I'd like to discuss with you my strategy, my game plan, and how I plan to crush this market right now in the immediate term. So, without any further ado, you guys already know the deal. If you like these daily crypto videos and nightly live streams, smack that thumbs up button, click the subscribe, tick the little bell. And let's get this crypto. Moon the likes, ladies and gentlemen. Moon them up. All right. So we'll begin with our Bitcoin technical analysis. And of course, before we begin, this is not investment advice. This is not trading advice. These are only my own opinions, ideas, and observations on the market. Always do your own research and your own due diligence before investing or trading, as this market is extremely high risk, and I am not your financial advisor. I will never tell you what to do with your trades or investments. Being said, let's begin here on the one-day time frame. We can clearly see that Bitcoin has been experiencing some exhaustion in in the trend. We had our $1,000 super candle to the upside, and ever since then, we've been just in a floaty type of formation. Now, we did have a series of higher highs being created, which looked promising. And I don't want to rule out that another higher high could be in the cards. So this is what we're going to get into now. But before we go there, let's just discuss. We did break down out of a pretty clear cut rising wedge formation. If you guys are subscribed here, you would remember that I was outlining this pattern for us in detail as it was developing. We had our upper line of resistance created by our wicks and candle tops and our upward sloping support line all along this region even though it appears to be bullish, right? The trend is moving upwards. This type of pattern per classical technical analysis theory generally breaks to the downside. And of course, once we get the confirmation that we fell out of the pattern, dropped below our old consolidation range right here, our local support, once we fall below there, uh, you know, we did have our drop before our immediate recovery. So where do we stand now that this pattern has played out? We saw our drop, and now our recovery. What is going on here in my opinion? Well, if we switch over to the four hour time frame, it's clear to see that our old resistance and then our old consolidation is now acting as the new resistance point for the current trend, albeit the volume is rather low. If you guys pay attention to the red line along my volume here at the bottom, that is the moving average for the volume uh, of the market right now, of, of Bitcoin in particular. And we can see that we've had a, just a downtrending volume moving average ever since uh, really our last big drop, right? We've just kind of been steadily falling off of a cliff here. So the big, the big test for Bitcoin right now is that can it get back above this red box of resistance? And the red box of resistance for me begins around 5,200 and goes all the way up to, to roughly 5,300. So that is the area I'm watching right now. The problem for me here, ladies and gentlemen, is that this does in fact to me look like a classic bear flag. A bear flag is created by a pull down, followed by a sideways a sideways range of consolidation and chop, which creates our flag, and then you would tentatively be awaiting for another flagpole to the downside to complete it, right? So how we extrapolate these, ladies and gentlemen, is that we take the size of our flagpole down, we're going to draw our line there, uh, we'll actually draw it to the candle body as that seems more more relevant to me and we would drag it to our tentative drop down point which would be right under our old support right all of these wicks 
right here. We'll draw it underneath there. That would be the breakdown loss of support. Uh, and that would tentatively bring us right down to a Fibonacci retracement level, which is beautiful in my opinion, ladies and gentlemen. That is the 0.382 Fibonacci retracement. So we do have a measured move here of our bear flag, bringing us right down to about the rough vicinity of the 0.382 Fibonacci retracement. I love when I see confluences like this because it gives me a little bit extra in terms of probability here, right? So we have our pattern here, but patterns can be tricky. Patterns don't always play out the way they do. Of course, we saw a rising wedge pattern play out. Let's actually take our, our measured move of this, of this wedge, right? We take the largest part of the wedge. We'll bring it from the breakdown point. Uh, and this area as well, ladies and gentlemen, look, look at where it fell to, right? We had our wick here, just so you guys understand the measured moves, right? Look where our wick wound up just shy of the complete measured move. So uh, it is, it's actually quite shocking how great patterns can extrapolate moves with the measurements, uh, but they're not always perfect, right? These are just tentative patterns. Of course, uh, technical analysis is never uh, predicting anything 100% of the time. Uh, and of course, past performance is not indicative of future results, but my measured move here for the bear flag pattern, I love that it actually coincides with another technical analysis tool that I keep up my sleeve, which is the Fibonacci retracement. So if we are to, to fall down to that region, right? Say that this pattern plays out right here, right now. Uh, we still are in the micro bull trend, in my opinion, right? Now, this may seem crazy because of the fact that we've dropped so far from the high, right? The peak. And actually, if we take our price range tool, let's see how high that would be. We'll go from our peak all the way down to the 0.382 Fibonacci. That would be nearly, ladies and gentlemen, a 16% move to the downside. Heinous, ludicrous, and a borderline debacle, if you do in fact ask me. So, is that the end of the trend there? For me, I, I believe that would be the last hope, right? If we fall to this level and consolidate, right? So we'd have a bear flag breakdown and a hold of this level, completing our measure move and holding where our prior wicks were and holding the 0.382 Fibonacci. This, in my opinion, could also bring our one day RSI down into nearly oversold conditions, which would be prime for another bounce and move to the upside, potentially to test overbought conditions once again. Once again, would be, we be looking for an oversold condition to bounce us up into an overbought condition, just like we saw here on the previous run and many previous runs before this one. So if we go back here into the trend now, uh, we see that we are traveling below this staunch resistance level right now. The volume is very low, ladies and gentlemen, indicating to me that a large, heinous, and flush move is looming on the horizon. Uh, and I believe that this this may, in fact, be, be the move before the large, large, large swing, okay? A move I'm seeing right now could bring us down to this line. But it's what happens after this that I believe is going to define the macro trend. Are we going to remain potentially bullish here on the macro trend as a whole? Or is this going to be a continuation of the bear market? Let's discuss. But if you are just tuning in now, don't forget to moon up the likes. Moon them up. Smash those thumbs. Click the subscribe button. Tick the little bell. Let's get this crypto. Satoshi needs a new pair of shoes. So let's say that this does fall down. We get our measured move and we fall to the 0.382 Fibonacci. This is make or break because if we fall here, consolidate and break, uh, very, very bearish in my opinion, ladies and gentlemen. If that breaks, I don't believe 6,000 is going to happen anytime soon. Uh, it could happen if we consolidate down here, but then again, we're going to have so much work, right? We're going to have so much work to do here. And by we, I mean Bitcoin. I'm speaking figuratively. Bitcoin will have so much work to do to get back up, break all of these levels, which should now become new resistance, right? and we'll have to go all the way up, test them, break them, et cetera, et cetera. That is not the easiest path to 6,000 in my opinion. If Bitcoin wants to get to 6,000, 
it's one either going to not have to respect the bear flag and just immediately shoot up through resistance right now. It's going to have to consider keeping this upward sloping trend going. Although I just don't like this, ladies and gentlemen, from a from a bearish perspective here, I don't like this type of channel here. It's very, very indicative, in my opinion, of weakness in the trend. And, and actually, before we continue here, I want to show you this before I forget here. This is the total crypto market cap. And what we see on the total crypto market cap, if the chart will load, there we go, is the fact that right now, if you are subscribed, you would remember uh, on the last stream I was doing just a day ago, I was showing you guys that we have every time that we've hit support here, the local support, we've bounced back into the rejection territory time and time again. And now we aren't even able to get up in there. So if right now we cannot get back up into the resistance box, the red box up there at the top, if we cannot even get back into this box, to me, ladies and gentlemen, this is purely a loss in momentum right now. We can also see that our volume has been floundering as well there. Uh, for me, we're seeing potentially an exhaustion inside the crypto market as a whole. And if we are getting that exhaustion right now, uh, seeing a confluence of bearish indicators here on the Bitcoin chart is not looking great for me, especially not trading below this red box of resistance. But let's let's hypothetically say that Bitcoin does a BART right now, right? Boom, brings us back up into this channel here. In order for us to reach 6,000, I believe that we're going to need to see another type of volume climax like this, ladies and gentlemen, something like that we had on the $1,000 candle. And how may that occur? That is the question, right? Oh, Kirby, well, how is that going to happen? Well, now let's take a look at the Bitcoin shorts, ladies and gentlemen. The Bitcoin shorts chart, this is a chart that shows the amount of short contracts open on the Bitfinex exchange, right? Uh, this is a pretty good gauge for the whole market. It's not perfect. This is only one exchange, but uh, of course, it's a, it's a good metric to look at in terms of charting, in my opinion. We are quite high. We haven't been this high since... Let's look at the last time. Well, the last time we were even in this vicinity, ladies and gentlemen, was all the way back in February, and we are, of course, uh, eclipsing that right now. So why may this produce a candle that could bring us back up into that vicinity? Well, it would be a short squeeze, in my opinion, guys. And short squeezes, here's one that's very recent, right? Where the shorts climb, 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 climb. They get here, boom, immediate immediate squeeze and the squeeze when that occurs it liquidates all these short contracts at once and it booms the price higher in dramatic fashion a a candle really like what we saw back uh, about a month ago when we had our super candle of one thousand dollars which began this whole trend itself so for me uh, right now, we are in fair game. As you see right here in pink, I have outlined the territory where we've really, time and time again, found significant rejection in the in the short contracts. But if we actually take a look here, and I'm going to use another rectangle, what we can really see here is that in the territory we are at right now, we have seen some significant rejection just from this point alone alone and really it's been the most two previous times the most uh recent rather excuse me i'm getting tongue-tied the two most recent times that we've been up in this vicinity we have seen rejections back down in dramatic fashion right notice guys that it's not just like a a long drawn out squiggle down right this is an aggressive drop here boom an aggressive drop here boom uh, I believe we are in fair territory now for one of these squeezes to occur. Uh, and if that is in fact the case, this would be the bullish case for me here for Bitcoin that could produce a BART pattern like what I just outlined here that could bring us not only back to our resistance box in the red there by our prior high, but actually up into my green target box here, which begins at about 5,800 and ranges all the way up into the $6,200 vicinity. This has been my bullish target zone for Bitcoin. If we didn't get the 
the fear, uncertainty, and doubt surrounding the, the tether debacle the other day, right? If that did not come out and people were speculating uh, to the negative side of that, I believe we would have already been testing in this range by now. Uh, and this would be a range for me that I would expect some rejection, resistance, and, and tentatively a harsh correction. But we did get the fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and this did happen to, to just play it out by itself. So now for me, ladies and gentlemen, if we get a short squeeze and into this zone, I still think that this may just be a bull trap, All, albeit that 6,000 would be a great target coming all the way from the depths of the crypto abyss up to 6,000 is an incredible feat for Bitcoin, but I would not expect that this in and of itself would be the spark that ignites the entire true bull run to bring us back to all-time highs or even anywhere towards towards 10,000 or anything like that. Uh, I would think this must be the end of the road for now uh, before a large correction potentially to fall back into our healthy range here, ladies and gentlemen, a healthy range of where old resistance of the trend as a whole could potentially now become new support after a heinous debacle of a correction, right? Average Joe and dreams at the water cooler crying that this thing dropped 30% because they would likely buy the top and then sell the bottom again as they don't understand how to read charts, crush this market, get this crypto, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, don't give the moon boys a shoulder to cry on, ladies and gentlemen. If they, if they want to learn and they don't want to put in the hard work that it that is required to learn and crush the market, don't give them a shoulder to cry on. Let them learn through trial and error, right? All that we can do, ladies and gentlemen, is continue to educate ourselves, stay on top of these charts 24-7, and look for that competitive edge that gives us the advantage over this market. The advantage to crush every human trader, bot, and algorithm in this market. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I haven't mentioned yet, but you already know that I, I am trading this market extremely aggressively right now. Every time this market makes a swing, I'm looking to strike on potentially life-changing trading opportunity. And I keep you up to date in VIP with every single trade, strategy, and plan that I formulate. I post my entries in real time, exits in real time, targets, plans, etc. Everything to the exact second that I'm making my trades and strategies, I post for you in real time in VIP. So if you are interested in all of my real time trade alerts, I will post that for you in VIP. I will see you in VIP right now. It's time to crush this market. It's time to get this crypto. It's time to transform yourself from average Joe into savage Joe. Let's get this crypto. I will see you all in VIP right now. Being said, uh, I'd also like to quickly look at Ethereum here uh, and Litecoin, as I believe that these top altcoins, and by top, I mean large market cap altcoins that I like to personally follow for a health indicator of the entire market, uh, I think there are some interesting signs in Ethereum and Litecoin that may show us where this market is headed in correlation with us trading underneath our resistance here on Bitcoin, underneath our resistance there on the crypto market cap, and the confluence of potentially bearish signals that we are seeing as well. So if you are just tuning in now, don't forget to moon up the likes, moon them up, smash those thumbs, click the subscribe button, tick the little bell. Let's get this crypto. Satoshi needs a new pair of shoes. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look here at Ethereum. So for me, I've had this box outlined for quite some time. This has been my resistance zone using our old prior consolidation bottom as a new rejection point. And look at where it falls, ladies and gentlemen. Hickory dickory dock. The old historic consolidation range becomes the new absolute top. Beautiful. Picture perfect. And where we've fallen to right now is not what I'd like to see. As we now have taken out our two prior highs, ladies and gentlemen, our two macro highs here, which should have acted as new support if we wanted to continue this trend higher. We have a relative double top here, a little double top a notch, if you will. We've fallen below our two prior highs, and now here on Ethereum as well, we look to be, in my opinion, forming another bearish flag. And if we take 
our extrapolation there on the bear flag as well. What we'll see, just sort of like Bitcoin, uh, this could have very disastrous uh, consequences here, bringing us down really into my target range uh, for shorts, which Ethereum is currently at 152 USD, uh, and I have ranges anywhere between 141 to 133, with an overshot target where, ironically, our measured move is extrapolating to between 126 and 118. I am going to be trading Ethereum aggressively as well, ladies and gentlemen. If you would like to see all of my trade alerts on Ethereum in real time as I plan to crush this market, I will keep you updated in VIP to the exact second with my trades on Ethereum as well. But just like Bitcoin, it's very startling to me to see that we have now lost all areas of tentative support. We're trading below our rejection territory and forming a tentative bear flag pattern formation all along while the volume is declining as well something to look at all right let's go over to litecoin as well you guys know litecoin has been a front runner here for quite some time really leading the way here for this truthfully parabolic uptrend uh, that it's been on now litecoin has been rejected at old levels of rejection territory right bottom here top here top here it's amazing how when we go back throughout history we can see that these levels stay true and they have once again proven to be a critical level for the coin now these levels here the white line the bottom of this also have been very very prominent throughout litecoin's history and in my opinion we needed to hold that level as it also had a very relative confluence with a 0.382 fibonacci retracement from the swing low to the swing high that in my opinion my friends needed to hold in order for the uptrend to continue not only did we get rejected at resistance but we failed to hold support at the historic support line and we've now failed to hold the 0.382 fibonacci retracement my friends this to me uh is looking more and more like it may want to retrace to the golden fibonacci retracement of 0.618 uh and where 0.618 currently stands is around 52 dollars 5157 with the bottom of our old resistance box which in theory must it must if it wants to stay bullish it should become new support if it's going to stay bullish at all and this my friends is anywhere between 52 dollars and 51 dollars uh still would be healthy for the trend as a whole but uh, you know in a short term view it's a debacle would be about a 50 percent retracement from where it currently ran up to and right now, with the loss of support here that we're seeing in Litecoin and Ethereum, uh, it to me is giving more sentiment to that Bitcoin may in fact be ready for further moves to the downside, along with the whole cryptocurrency market cap, as I showed you, is trading under its resistance as well. And now with two top market cap coins such as alt uh such as altcoin wow such as ethereum and litecoin uh we're seeing in my opinion what could be two more confluences here that this market is going to pull back some more uh before it's ready for the fuel to boom it up to the upside once again so right now ladies and gentlemen uh, i hope you see that many people are going to get caught like a deer in the headlights here uh the trend may appear to be bullish but in my opinion, there are a lot of cautionary signs here. Could it remain bullish and moving to the upside? Absolutely. But there are some signs here that are pointing to me that a vicious move may be ready to occur here. I see a lot of patterns, a lot of indications and indicators, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I almost forgot to show you the NVT, guys. Sheesh. We've truly lost all support here, not only of the gray, which is the uh, main metric but as you notice as well there the little orange line underneath it is the moving average i've i've adjusted this so many times ladies and gentlemen giving the nvt the benefit of the doubt i had it first drawn on the gray lines that broke then i adjusted it drew it onto the moving averages to give it the benefit of the doubt that broke and now we are trending downwards which as we all know uh you know historically once this breaks support uh it's been very very 
problematic as it's then resulted in a sell-off historically. So this is something I'm watching here too. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I know that the market, when it moves sideways like this, as it has, people... T t they tend to take their eyes off the chart, right? They tend to stop thinking about it. And then when they come back into the market, it's when they've lost all of this money, right? And then they, they come and cry to Don Don Carbonaccio. Oh, Kirby, well, well. The thing is, is that there's no reason to cry, ladies and gentlemen. Don't be taking the trip to Wrecked City in the first place. Leave Wrecked City for Average Joe and James at the Water Cooler. It's time to crush this market. It's time to get this crypto. It's time to transform yourself from Average Joe into Savage Joe. Let's get this crypto. I will see you all in VIP right now. I'm getting back to the charts right now. I'm ready to make my trades. I'm ready to formulate my strategies and formulate my plans right now to take complete advantage of what is about to happen here in the market, in my opinion. I see that potentially life-changing trading opportunity is looming, and I'm not going to be one to squander it. If you'd like to see all my trades in real time, all my strategies, plans, entries, exits, targets, take profits, etc., I will be posting it all for you exclusively in VIP. Shout out to my VIPs. I will see you all in VIP right now. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed. If you could one last time, moon up the likes, moon them up, smash those thumbs, click the subscribe button, tick the little bell. Let's get this crypto. I've got the battle helmet on the mud boots, and the trench coat, because it's time to get this crypto. I'm fired up. Are you going to be the one that crushes this market, or are you going to be the one that gets crushed? The decision is yours, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you all in VIP right now. Shout out to my VIPs. I will see you in VIP right now. And until next time, my friends, be safe, be happy, be healthy. It's your boy, Crypto Kirby. Peace and love, my friends. Curbs.